Hey guys, welcome back. This is Amy Chicken from Team Pandori. We have a package from FedEx. Let's magic this open. Abracadoop. Odroid it is. So the last Odroid I had was an XU4. Let's see what's in the biggest box. It's a fan. According to the Odroid website, it says that fans are good. Let's see what's in the smaller box. Certainly a lot heavier. If I don't like what's inside, I've got all this bubble wrap. So inside this bag, we've got another bag. Just like them Russian dolls. There we go. So this is the N2 Plus. Unlike the other Android boxes we've had for Emuelic, this one is an open board. With an open board like this, we need to be a bit careful. Any piece of metal could short the whole board out. We've got a little TV remote thing here. The little switch here will choose from the EMMC or the micro SD to boot from. Other than that, we've got the power in, AV out, and yeah, battery holder. What you see is what you get really, and it's actually reasonably heavy because the whole back plate is a heatsink. This is going to keep cool. On the back we've got the DC in. The adapter needs to be 12 volts at 2.5 amps. We've got four USB 3s, HDMI, and a LAN Ethernet port. For today's size comparison, we will use a banana. The Odroid N2 Plus is half the length of a banana. Okay, 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 I'll stop monkeying about now and use a ruler. Doskoi! What we have here is an overclocked N2. It's an S922 board, a choice of 2GB or 4GB memory, but what is concerning is the lack of Bluetooth or Wi Fi. This fan is actually extra, I paid about $10 for this, and you can attach it by twisting these little thingies on, and these screws can act like a stand. I also added a 2032 battery, inserted LAN, HDMI, and a controller, and then installed Emuelic to a microSD. We've had Emuelic on this channel a few times. Simply, it's a front end for all of your games and emulators. This will look great in an arcade cabinet, or even hooked up to your TV. You also have choices of Batocera, Linux, and Android if you wish. Okay, so the elephant in the room. There's no Bluetooth controller on the board. If you want Bluetooth, you need to get a USB dongle. And the same for Wi-Fi. If you wanted to use this for Ethernet cable, nothing to worry about. To the games. Sega Genesis, Mega Drive, 32X, Sega CD, Super Nintendo, and anything before that, this thing can run easily. If you want to see older systems than this running on MULEC, please check out the HK1 review. Final Burn Neo runs quite flawlessly on the system. And here's some main. Amiga's running full speed. That's correct, 50 frames per second. And also Scum VM, no problem. That's the tuna fish sandwich I made last spring. Cruising USA, N64. This is the fastest I've seen this game run on Emulic. Same goes for Killer Instinct Gold. Go. 
some Sega Saturn. Sega Rally runs surprisingly you well. And the same goes for Daytona USA. Jumping over to the Dreamcast, we can see that it's not 100%, but it's very close. This is at default graphic settings. Naomi, Capcom vs SNK2. Excellent. And a bit of Kenshiro. Hokuto no Ken on the Atomus Wave. PlayStation 1, Tekken 3. PSP, outrun, coast to coast. So using the buffered setting, we do get slow down. If we switch out the graphical settings to be unbuffered, two times texture upscaling, a ton of settings at high, it runs great. Another example of a game that runs badly with buffered. And then great, unbuffered is this um, super goo ghost. And then there's Tekken 6 that looks fantastic. So we're going to add two more games here at the end. First one, Killer Instinct. Not bad, but it's not 100%. Same goes for Tekken Tag. After all that, we've got a temperature of 36 degrees, and the fan did not turn on once. If you want the system only for Emuelic, you're not going to need that fan. So let's get to the pros and cons. This box stays very cool. It's a dedicated board, and it's reasonably priced. But sadly, no Wi-Fi and no Bluetooth. And they're quite difficult to get your hands on, especially with the recent chip shortage. So if you're wanting to upgrade from your Super Console X, the MUB is still a great option, good speeds at a good price. And then the next step up from that would be the N2+. Plus. Anything in between these two systems is really not worth it. The HK1 box is actually half the price of an N2+. Plus. If you want something more capable, then the next best thing would be a mini PC. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and the affiliate links are down in the description below. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the flip, sir. Bleh.